Well everyone, hope all of you are ready for the all-important and long-awaited John 3800's Arachnator video. So, the purpose of this video is to show you what tarantulas do I have and what do I currently keep as of September 2012. So, this is my rack. Whole bunch of teas in here. And these are the ones that are empty. I have to clean them up. Alright, so let's uh, get started and do them in no particular order. Okay, so the furry first tea that I have here is an Afono Palma Simani, the Costa Rican zebra. Uh, it's a stripe, a 5 inch female. The second tea I own here is a 4.5 to 5 inch uh, female Nandu Colorado Velosis, the Brazilian black and white. <laughs> I'm not opening up this cage just because of their really bad hair. Her name is Mina. T number three is a Lassiodora difficilis, the Brazilian fire red bird eater. This is a five and a half to six inch female. Uh, yes, she does have a little bad leg here. Uh, she'll improve that with the next coming molt. All right, T number four is in a Vicolaria urticans. This is a six inch female giant Peru pinto named Cat. One of the star attractions of my Avix in the feeding videos. Loves to eat. And also uh, very mean at the same time. Really cool Avic. Number five is a male Nandu tripepi, formerly known as Velpinus. The strawberry blonde bird eater or the giant blonde bird eater. Uh, three inch male named Darius. Next one, number six, is a Thrixopalma Peruvians, the Chilean Green Velvet, that I got as a gift from Sturmy76, recently molted during the last uh, feeding video. And this is one of my favorite ones, uh, very rare to find in Canada, and uh, not so much in the U.S., this one here is an Afonal Palma Moderatum, uh, the Rio Grande Gold. Her name is Oriole, after uh, the Skyward Sword. Now, unfortunately, you're not going to see these two teeth. These are one of my pet holes. But in here I have a Cherneochilus Lagardi, which is the Fort Hall Baboon. Uh, this is a four and a half inch adult female. Um... Yeah, it's somewhere in there. She likes to hide. And holy cow, she must be really busy. Uh, this is my OBT, Cherneochilus uh, marinus uh, red form. Wow, almost as webbing as good as my GBB. Awesome, that's cool. Even though I don't get to see her very often, but that's pretty cool that she's webbing. So I know that way she's making herself uh, very happy. Next one here is a Foligus Crassy Peeps. This is the Queensland Whistling Tarantula from Australia. This is a four inch female named Nicole. I got this one out especially for all you viewers. Ask me how my M. Balfoury is doing. Well here uh, she or he is. Look at this beauty. She's approximately three and a half inches. So much like a cobalt blue, except uh, you have a lot of uh, blonde patches around. Very skittish, not as aggressive as I expected it would, but yeah, this is the same one that I got from T Soy Spiders. Three and a half inches, and teas like this in Canada are super expensive. A size like this generally goes for around 500 to 700 dollars. No joke. So this is probably one of the most expensive ones in my collection. Cool. Alright, next one. Here's number 12. Yasmin, the E. Capristratus that I showed in the video I just posted last night. Freshly molted 4.5 inch female. You can see much better in better lighting. 
you can see really the pink hairs are all around her legs. Here's a tea that we haven't seen in a while. Uh, this is Lois. She is the Gramasola Rosea red color form. Obviously not as vibrant as you would expect from the species. Ah, oh, that's why. She just got into pre molt Yep, this will be Morris's mate when uh, she and he gets a little bit older. Alright, here's Wendy. She's a G. Pokerpees female. Around 4 inches. I had her ever since she was a half an inch back three years ago. So this is pretty much uh, how she grew from then. I also have uh, one of her sisters named Peach, which we'll see in the video to come. Next up, my awesome Racky Palma Emilia, the Mexican painted red leg named Emilia. Fitting name for a lovely female. Yeah, she's a little overweight. I have to lay off the superworms a little bit. Switch over to crickets. Okay, next up, here's Lucy. Cirrocosmus Perez Malesi, the Bolivian dwarf. Yeah, she is approximately around an inch and a half, which is pretty much full grown for a Cirrocosmus species. Uh, at least this one probably will get up to maybe about a half an inch more. Yeah, she's got a phantom egg sac. Never made it her before. Too cute. What a lovely tea. This one here is my Thomopoulos Erminia, the Venezuelan sun tiger. Josie, who is a four and a half to five inch mature female. Just love those orange stripes on her legs. As well as her tiger rump. Yeah, look at her eyes. Cool. Here is a Brachypelma Classy, the Mexican pink. Yeah, named Petunia. She is a five and a half inch, fully grown female. Love the pink on her legs, as well as the hair on the abdomen. Here's Kira, a male Brachypelma apopolosum, the Honduras curly hair. One of the many uh, beginners that I fully recommend along with uh, Brachypalma smithy. You can see he has a kind of a bad hair day, so to speak. And then the next guy, I, I mean girl, I got was an unknown species that I bought from Tarantula Canada, I uh, believe in the October 2010 Expo video. Uh, this one here, we're in debate whether or not to call this one Thyrocanthus livingstoni or Ephonopalma curry Uh But this one is here. She's a 5 inch uh, fully grown female. And I named her Mystery as uh, named by Shanrock777. Perfect name because she is indeed a Mystery T. Alright, here is Oh So Hungry Talia, my rose hair. See if she can come out and say hi to us. Yeah, that's her hungry response. Here she is, four and a half, maybe five inch adult female. She's probably likely around eight to ten years old. I'm um, not going to be mating this one with uh, Paul's male because uh, I don't think she molted for quite some time so I'm kind of worried so I'll try with Michaela since she freshly molted and here is a Vitellius Soro Kebai which will be the next subject of my Mythbuster video I really have to rekindle that series which is the Brazilian striped bird eater uh, five inches full grown okay so I believe now I'm at 23 yeah, threat pose already. This is an Avic, everyone. <laughs> uh, this is Mona, my Vicularia Leta, the Puerto Rican Pinto. Remember I had her three years ago as a half-inch spiderling? She was an electric blue one. Well, that's her, and she's gotten a lot meaner since then. I remember handling her one time. I think that was the last time I'll be able to handle her now. <laughs> 
And this one here, of course, everyone knows P. Fasciata, Sri Lankan Ornamental. Don't have to open up the lid. This one here, I suspect that it is a male according to his photo stripe. The abdomen part, you can see the black outline much more pronounced than the white one. <sighs> Sucks already. This is like fifth male in a row. I need a female really badly. Okay, we got some more male pokies for you. This one is a Pocletheria petersoni, which maybe not be a petersoni after all. Uh, the ghost ornamental. I have to figure out what species that is. I don't think that's a petersoni. And this one here is a male P. rufilata, the red slate ornamental. I got this one as a freebie from Mac and Cass when I got a, a Anox that unfortunately passed away. Uh, yeah, it'd be re it's really awesome that I have a male of this one because I have a huge female which we'll be seeing towards the end of the video. Nice guy. I named him Sephora but I'm going to have to choose a better name for her. For him actually, he's a male. Okay, here I have my Gramasola Pulchra. Brazilian Black. This is a male named Roy. And here I have Amber, who is my Euathlis species red. The Probably the most catatonic tarantulas that I ever worked with. Very docile. Just always in a good mood. Which I love. Yeah, full grown, around two and a half inches. In a two liter shoebox enclosure, which are perfect for your juveniles. And I have a little small juvie of a Brachypalma albiceps. I got this from this year's uh, expo. Uh, named her Joy. Alright, here's Abby. Holotheli Inci, the Trinidad Olive. Uh, this is a adult female, believe it or not. They don't grow any more bigger than that. I love this species because these are probably one of the best communal species out there. Yeah, mature males will probably be half that size, so this is definitely a confirmed female, which I love. Very easy to take care of. And here I have some Lassidora species. Oh, uh, looks like I have to do more rehouse. Here is my Lassidora fracta, also known as the Brazilian smoky gray bird eater. And then I'll let you compare it to my Kluge, the Bahia Scarlet Bird Eater. Um, yeah, so this is the Kluge. Necros, little male. And Willow, who might be a suspect female. Alright, next up, one of the most potent tarantulas that I own is a Stromatopelma calciatum. Uh, the feather leg baboon. Uh, this one looks to be a female, uh, probably around two inches. Xena's successor. This is the one that previously passed away on me uh, while suffering a bad molt. And I have some gigas here, uh, Tapnikinius, the orange tree spiders. One of the fastest and most aggressive arboreals that I've worked with. This is a female. And I have one male left. Yeah, these are the only two gigas that I have remaining in my collection. I uh, had a large female that died, and I had another small female that died as well. Now, this one here is a emerald skeleton. And there she is. Around three and a half inches. Probably almost full grown. Number 36, Black Trapdoor, still alive and doing well. 37, Pocotheria Hanuma Vila Semika, the Ramesh Worm Ornamental. One of my prized pokies, extremely rare. And her name is uh, Zafina. Hopefully this is a female. We'll see.
Here at Clay's Act 3, here's the four hall you wanted to see. This is Nerissa. Uh, this is one that was kind of unique, really, because I thought for sure that this would have been a Chordatus. But when, when I went to look at her molts, and I saw she was not a Chordatus at all. Uh, another P. Lagardi. Four hall baboon. She's approximately around three inches. I will have to remove her out of that deli cup into a six liter shoe box. So that's another rehouse video that I'll have to eventually make. There's Melina, the Brachypalma Bomi. Well, actually, she's still okay in that enclosure for now. He's the guy I'm going to have to transfer. This is the Cantuscuria geniculata. This is a male named Derek. Uh, three inches. Number 40, mature male Pocotheria fasciata, Sri Lankan ornamental. Here's Thomas. You can see his bulbous pedipalps and his not so colorful appearance. Yeah, he matured pretty quickly. I'm still waiting for Prometheus to respond uh, to uh, my post because he wanted my male to breed. Since I don't have a female. <laughs> And this one here, oh, there it is, or she, is Dinah, formerly Selino Cosmia dichromata, and now it's called the Orphanaceous dichromata, the New Guinea black femur. This is another tea that I have from Australia. Uh, pet hole, you can barely see the abdomen. It's got like a bright orange carapace. All right, 42. You can probably see over here. This is my Ornifacious uh, Philippinus, or Thulino Brachys Philippinus. This is the Filipino orange. Little uh, spiraling. 42 is peach, my G Poker peas that I mentioned earlier. Wendy's uh, sister. A little bit bigger. Four and a half inches. Very defensive. And one of my most defensive species that I have is the spawn from hell. Here's Isabella from Mictopus cancerides, the Haitian brown bird eater, four and a half to five inches. She was half an inch back three years ago, so that's how fast these Cancerides grow. Okay, T number 44. Uh, this one here is a Sparabophria Hoffmanni, the Central American horned. A little half an inch spiraling. Sinophonal Palma Calcody spiraling that I got from Eman. Looks to be female. One of the slowest growing species. If you guys see Marilyn, which is my adult female, this will take about 10 years before they reach that size. Really slow, but one of the longest lived. Uh, yeah, this one I got a transfer. There's a uh, Tectite, Cuban Pygmy, Critopholus Ramsey. I'm going to give her um, a little small deli container with enough substrate for her to burrow. This one here is my cobalt red rump, Marin, Thrixopalma sanulum. And the Lampra Palma valisiopes, the Singapore blue that I got from Mademoiselle 1, and it looks to be a suspect female. And number 49 uh, is my Pyragallus Pandora which we probably won't be able to see very much. Hanging out in the background is uh, Tetra. No, sorry, not Tetra. Trinity. Uh, my A Versicolor female that I bought from Shanrocks, 777. Still doing well. Number 51 is Zelda. The P. regalis that made me so proud. 
She was a mother of 40 awesome Pyragalla spiralings. And here's a little better video of uh, my Aversi color jar out so you can actually see what she looks like now. Yeah, she's the one with the green carapace. About three and a half inches. I'd say I, I had Tetra, she was my old Versicolor, and she was a little bit larger than this. Yeah, very cool looking teeth. It's too bad that as slings are um, very difficult to, to care for. Okay, so I'm at 52. Is uh, Kina, my haplopus species Columbia Large, the pumpkin patch. I got this year's expo in March. Molted once in my care. This one here are my trio of some of post cabbage the trade at Chevron that I got from Sinister, uh, who has still my mature male LP. There's a second one. Got a third one here. And if you do everything correctly in raising them, you're gonna get a monster that big. Yeah, this is Trina, seven inch female. She's just awesome to look at. Here's Salem, my Salem ornamental, Vocotheria formosa. Freshly molted, she's, she's approximately around six to seven inches, fully mature. Right, trying to get this tea out of in the open, yeah. Not a happy tea. Again, this is another spawn from hell that I got from my local pet store for $30. This is Jezebel, who is another P. Concerides that I got. And she's a little bit larger than Isabella. She's approximately around five and a half inches. Yeah, yeah, and she still is a meanie. A lot meaner than my other one. <laughs> She just loves her cave, so I'll just let her be. Okay, number 5758 is, <laughs> this little thing will become that big, is a Formictopus platus, which is the Caribbean island bird eater. Uh, I've got some pokies here. A little Pocotheria bara, the Arvory Lowland Ornamental. Camera's not focusing well, so you can actually see what she looks like. There we go. Ugh. Maybe if I just open up the cage, you can see it better. Ah, there we go. Hoping this one is a male, because I do have a big female that I've raised for the past three years. You can see she's a monster. And what I'm going to do is compare the Highland version, which is over here. Hang on. Okay, so here's my Highland Safuska named Candy. You can see the colors are much more brighter and much more pronounced than the Lowland form. Here's Charmaine. She's an adult female. You can see she's a lot more darker colored than her. And that's the that's the the biggest difference between the highland and the lowland. That's why the lowland is called Pibara, just to avoid confusion. Even though that this is a synonym, and this one is the Savaska Highland form, yeah, which is also another lovely female that I have. All right, number sixty-three. I ain't gonna open up this enclosure for you. She is my very nervous Pocotheria ornata, the fringed ornamental. She is approximately around 8 inches. Yeah, you can definitely see the epigastric furrow right over here, which indicates it's the female. Alright, number 64. This is my Tapanikinia Sancti Vincenti. The St. Vincent's Tree Spider. This is my female, which did me proud. And uh, the fact that she got me a good batch of spiralings. 
It's too bad that Armando's mail uh, passed away, unfortunately. Okay, we'll get to you next. It is another uh, rare pokey here in Canada. This one here is a Tigrina Wesseli, the Wessel Tiger Ornamental. She's around 5 inches and her name is uh, Tina. Alright, a couple of more pokies. Here is a Pistriata, the Mysore Ornamental. I have another one that's currently with uh, Spider Owner 69, who is going to mate it with uh, his female. And when the specimen dies, he's going to be setting it for its uh, DNA, which is pretty cool. Uh, this one here is uh, my P. Miranda. Miranda. One of my most calmest um, pokies next to my P. Barra. Yeah, there we go. She's around five inches. Okay, this is a very light sensitive pokey, very very nervous, but you can definitely see her epic, uh, her photo stripe, it's much more brighter than my fasciata that you've seen before, and you can make out the epigastric furrow, but this is my Pocotheria smithy, the yellow backed ornamental, and her name is Allison. Here, I just brought her out for you. This is <laughs> my Rosalina. Somapolis Pulker, a Panama Blonde. She's in desperate need of a pre molt. Just want to show you the true colors of the specimen. Yeah, there we go. She's like four and a half inches. She's very, very beefy. And uh, fully mature. 69 and 70 are a pair of H. Maculata, the Togo Sharpers Baboon. Now this is Dementia, which I got from Paul. There she is. He had also another sling that uh, passed away. There was another tea that I didn't mention in my other video. And this is Libby. This is the one that I I personally kept for around four and a half years. Nearly five now. Half an inch spiraling now. It's actually the very first time I actually see her in the open like this. I just, she's always hiding in her burrow and that she made. Yeah, she's very, very fat, so that's a very good sign. She never appears in any of my feeding videos because I never see her. But it's a treat to see her in the open like that. Cool. And number 71, your classic Avicularia Avicularia, the pink toe. Okay, so uh, this is end of uh, part one. I'm going to be splitting up into two parts because I know a lot of people don't like to see half hour long videos. <laughs> so, hope you enjoy it. And next video, I'm going to do the bottom half.